What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to improve your VO2 max, and more importantly, how you can improve your swimming, be more efficient, and swim faster by focusing on this specific thing. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what the VO2 max is, a simple way that it's measured. We'll get into the weeds just a little bit, and then more importantly, we're gonna talk about how to increase your VO2 max and some different things that you can do from a training perspective that you can apply into your routine. We're also gonna walk through an aerobic workout that's really focused on improving VO2 max and also your overall swimming endurance and capacity and different things that you can do in training. So if you guys are new here, what's going on? I'm Coach Ferris and here we take your swimming to the next level. So if you wanna swim faster and smarter than ever before, you are in the right place. Make sure you subscribe. Let's get right into the video. What is VO2 max? It is your maximum oxygen uptake during exercise. And what that really means, it's a measure of your aerobic endurance, right? We think about endurance, you know, oftentimes you think about running or cycling, and a lot of people think swimming is that endurance sport, and that's because it is. You have an elevated heart rate for a period of time, and you can normally tell when something is endurance when you feel exhausted doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and underline endurance. Sorry, it's a bad underline, but you get what I'm saying. Endurance is where you just feel exhausted after a period of time, and your body is physically physically exerted, your lungs are working, your heart is pumping, and there's a lot of blood flow going to your muscles. Now what that really means, in terms of VO2 max, it's how well your heart can push blood to your muscles. Remember, the goal of your heart, the whole point of it, is to circulate blood, to do It's circulating oxygenated blood to your muscles. And that's why when you exercise, your heart rate goes up because your body's trying to circulate that oxygenated blood. And so when we're measuring VO2 max, it's basically how well your heart can push blood into your muscles and how effectively your muscles can use the oxygen. So when you train your body, you're training, the, there's muscular endurance, and there's also your overall capacity of your lungs and your heart. So the more in shape you get, the more you train, the more you do the stuff that we talk about here in the video and through different workouts, you're actually going to improve this and make the machine, which is your body, more efficient. And that's the whole point of all of this. So how is VO2 max measured? Well, you can get pretty scientific, so we're just gonna glance over this just a little bit, just to have that foundation. But it's basically your milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. Whew, that's a doozy, it sounds kinda complicated. Basically, the higher your VO2 max, the more oxygen can be absorbed during exercise and the more efficient you are and the better performance outcome you can have because of that. So high VO2 max is good, lower VO2 max, not as good from the perspective of endurance sports. Now here's an example, if you inhale 10 liters of oxygen in one minute and exhale six liters of oxygen in that same time frame, then your uptake is four liters per minute. Remember, we're doing uptake, so it's your maximum oxygen uptake during exercise. That's what we're measuring. And so an elite swimmer, if you're thinking about like who's a pro, you know, you got an Olympic swimmer, an endurance athlete, top of the top, 66 to 88 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. Now, if you don't know what your VO2 max is and you're trying to calculate it, there are some devices out there you've probably seen in like the lab, someone's got a mask hooked up to them and all that stuff. In general, you can focus on a few things that will improve. So whatever your baseline is, even if you don't know if it's 66 or 54 or whatever, that actually doesn't really matter because what you're trying to do is you're trying to improve from where you're at. Now you're like, well, if I can't measure it, how do I improve it? What gets measured gets improved. Well, there's a few proxies in swimming and proxy just means another way of, of analyzing the same thing. So instead of having a VO2 max number, there's a lot of other numbers we can look at which we'll use as a proxy for your VO2 max. You improve these numbers, you improve your VO2 max. They're kind of one and one in the same. So well, let's talk about it. So how do you increase your VO2 max? So you can restrict your oxygen intake. Now you might think, well, how do I do that? Does that mean I just don't breathe? So if you go like running and you try and hold your breath while you run, it's not gonna work. You're gonna feel pretty bad pretty fast. You'll actually probably feel fine for the first few strides and then your body's gonna run out of oxygen and you're gonna feel really bad. So don't do that, but when you swim, that's kind of what you do anyway. And that's why even if you take a really in shape athlete, someone who's like super, super athletic, great endurance, they can go run marathons on end, you throw them in a pool 
and they may not have any endurance because your face is submerged and it's a different style. Your body isn't used to that kind of a, an, an, an input. And so basically when you swim, you're already working on improving your VO2 max. But if you're a swimmer and you're trying to get better, that's when we got to think about different ways we can train. So we're going to talk about training in just a little bit, but there are different training devices and methods that we can use. So one of those is simply restricting your oxygen, restricting your intake. You can do that using a snorkel. You can do that by moderating your breathing in sets. So breathing every three strokes instead of every two strokes. Breathing every five strokes. Not breathing at all for a 25 meter segment. Really working on your underwaters. And then there's the swimming component of training, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And that has to do with the actual structure of your workouts and how you're executing those workouts. And that is the most important part of all of this. So I, we can talk about VO2 max and how you measure it and all that fancy stuff. But at the end of the day, it's what are you doing and how consistently are you doing it from a training perspective? There are a couple more devices I wanna talk about that have to do with restricting this intake and training your lungs and your body to be able to do this. So one of them is the AeroFit. Now the AeroFit breathing trainer helps you improve your breath efficiency, anaerobic threshold, and vital lung capacity, which will give you the edge in swimming. So you can start with a guided vital lung capacity test in the AeroFit Sport app and then you'll begin a swimming specific training program that takes just five to 10 minutes a day. Now sessions like the circle or the square teach you how to control your breathing in specific patterns and breath holding exercise can help you keep your head underwater for longer when you swim. And after about four weeks training with the AeroFit, I was able to increase my vital lung capacity by over 25% people. The app is super easy to use and it gives you real-time feedback. It's like playing a video game. I love it. It's awesome that I'm able to demo it for you guys. Now I've talked a lot about the AeroFit on this channel and how it's helped me. And I really think it's gonna help you guys too if you're interested in improving this type of component in your training. So head over to the link in the description below to get 15% off an AeroFit breathing trainer. Now this discount is just for the MySwimPro community and I know you guys are gonna love it. So thanks again to AeroFit for hooking us up and sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the water. We're gonna talk about this aerobic workout. Now if you're wondering where I got this workout from, I actually pulled it from the my Swim Pro app. It was one of the workouts of the day. I modified it a little bit, but what we're talking about is a level three workout. It's 3,000 meters and it's, it takes about 60 minutes to complete. Now, as you guys follow along on screen, you're gonna see the workout. I'm gonna walk through it step by step. Just keep in mind that this workout is personalized to me. So if you think the intervals are too fast or too slow or whatever, or you're not understanding what's going on, that's okay. The app will dynamically change that based on your swimming speed. So huge feature of the app and let's get into it. So warm up. we've got a 300 freestyle, nice and easy, stretch it out. I got it on 430 in the easy effort, effort uh, level. Just stretch it out. That is your aerobic, get the heart rate pumping, get the blood flow. Then we're gonna go 650s kick on the 55, and we're actually gonna descend these. So we're gonna increase that heart rate, get the pump, get the blood flowing, and that's our warm up. Once we're warmed up, we're gonna get into the, the MDPS, that's short for max distance per stroke set. We're gonna go 450s freestyle, and what we have written here is negative split your stroke count. What we're doing is we're counting how many strokes we take on the way down, and we're gonna negative split and take less on the way back. So if I take 10 strokes on the way down, I'm gonna take nine on the way back. We're trying to improve our efficiency, and it takes capacity capacity from an endurance perspective in VO2 max because you have to regulate your breathing and increase your distance per stroke, which means you're going to breathe less often because you're taking less strokes. So you take less strokes, you breathe less often, and you're going to work that underwater because you're going to get a good flip turn. We're pretending this is a 25 meter pool. Now let's get into the main set because this is where the magic happens. So we're going to start out with 425's drill. It, it's calling for equipment. It's really cool in the app. It actually shows you when you should use different pieces of equipment. You can customize it, you can change all that. But we're gonna go 425 zipper drill, focus on high elbows, and we often wanna do a drill before we get into the main set. So, you know, this is the first part of the main set. It could have had the drill set in this preset here, but whatever, don't worry about it. We're gonna go the drill set, then we're gonna go the, the meaty part of it, which is 10 100s freestyle, 
two rounds. So this right here, we go on 10, two, 10 100s. In the first round, we're gonna do on the 120. and the second round, we're gonna go on the 110. Again, these intervals are, are for me, they might be 150 and then 140, or two minute 150, or on the 105 and then the 55 if you're Superman. So depending on your speed, the app will change it, but what's important to remember here is that we are focused on building our aerobic capacity. So just by swimming for about 12 minutes at that level of intensity, it's a red, which means we're in the threshold effort level. So we are at threshold, which means our heart rate is pretty high and we're not getting a lot of rest. So on the 120, I might be coming in on the 108, getting about 12 seconds rest. Heart rate's gonna be relatively elevated. We take a 30 second break. We're gonna go to the second round of 10 100s. Now they're on the 110. So we are really cooking here and we're not gonna get much rest. So maybe I'm going 106 on these, not getting a lot of rest, only about four seconds of rest. And we're just trying to make the interval and that's what counts. We're gonna wrap it up with a 100 freestyle nice and easy. And what we've done in this set, we had these two main things, the, the 10 100s, each of those about 12 minutes, let's call it. And so that's about 25 minutes. The goal we were looking for is about 30 minutes of aerobic capacity training. So if you actually do the intervals as I have them written, this workout's not 60 minutes, it might only be 50 minutes. It might take you 70 minutes, 80 minutes, it doesn't really matter. But what you're trying to do is have a block of about 30 minutes of just this aerobic capacity. And what you can do is you can actually increase this type of workout really easily. So the main set, we can keep everything the same, but the main set, instead of going one round, we're actually gonna go two rounds. And if we go two rounds, what we're doing is we're actually increasing the total volume of the workout by 2,100 meters. We can also layer in another set group here and just do this part over and over. So instead of basically 2100s, we're gonna do 4100s. And so we have now an hour session of just aerobic output. And this is a great test set too. So I, you, know, you know how I mentioned, how do you measure your VO2 max? The best way you can do that is by looking at something like your aerobic threshold in training. How many, how fast can you do five 100s freestyle? 10 100s freestyle. So for me, maybe it's 105. That is my absolute max effort. I can't swim faster than one minute and five seconds per 100 for 10 100s. You might be two minutes or 205 or 215, and you wanna systematically work on improving your aerobic threshold. And if you wanna do that, the best way to do it is by following a structured training program. And you can get that in the MySwim Pro app. You'll have guided workouts just like this, and you can sync it with your Apple Watch or Garmin smartwatch. It's an incredible experience and you have to try it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what questions you have down below. Thanks again to Aerofit for sponsoring and I'll see you guys later. Happy swimming. Bye.